In this video tutorial, Dr. Adam Segmiller will discuss key differences and similarities between types of Hodgkin lymphoma, specifically classic Hodgkin lymphoma and nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. Dr. Segmiller is Associate Professor of the Department of Pathology, Microbiology, and Immunology at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, Vice Chair for Clinical Pathology, and Director of Laboratory Medicine, as well as Hematopathology. Today I want to show two cases of Hodgkin lymphoma. And the, so what I want to start with first is a case of uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma. This came from a 33-year-old woman who presented with a uh, neck mass that extended down um, and included some uh, mediastinal lymphadenopathy. I start on really low power. Um, what you can see is that the architecture of this lymph node has been completely effaced. Um, and what's left is these little nodules of in, interspersed between uh, really thick bands of collagen fibrosis. This is a nodular effacement of the lymph node um, with uh, extensive sclerosis. So going a little bit higher power, you start to appreciate um, the cellular constituents of this infiltrate. So you see there are lots of eosinophils, and so you can see those are all over the place. And interspersed between them and this are lots of neutrophils um, as well. Um, also, there are a lot of histiocytes in this. And, but if you look carefully as we go on to a little bit higher power um, and scan through this mixed infiltrate, the other thing you see are some large atypical cells. And this is a really good example right here of what those large cells look like. You can see it has a really irregularly shaped nucleus with a rather large um, uh, sort of reddish, purplish um, nucleolus. Um, and in fact, you can see it depends on how it's cut through, but there's actually two nucleoli. There's one right here as well. And this is sort of the classic uh, Hodgkin or Reed Sternberg cell. Um, some of the cells you can see show really uh, prominent retracted cytoplasm. Um, almost what looks like an island in a lake, and so we call these lacunar cells, um, and that's a really uh, common feature that we see in Hodgkin lymphoma. The thing to note here is that the large atypical cells are really a minority um, of the cellular constituents of this particular sample, but in fact those are the neoplastic cells, and they're producing cytokines that stir up the rest of this um, inflammatory infiltrate that you appreciate here. This is a, a really classic morphologic appearance of a classical Hodgkin lymphoma, but what really um, solidifies the diagnosis is the immunophenotype. Um, so we'll start with basic lymphocyte markers. We'll look at a CD3 and a CD20. All of these CD3 positive T cells are on small lymphocytes. We don't see any of those large atypical cells um, that, uh, that we saw um, on the H&E section when you look at CD3. The next stain we look at is a CD20 stain, so this highlights B cells. The B cells are present, but even more sparse than the T cells were. The CD20 is mostly staining small lymphocytes. Again, we don't see significant CD20 staining on these large atypical cells. So Now that's not true of all classical Hodgkin lymphomas. A minority, but a proportion of classical Hodgkin lymphomas will actually express surface CD20. Um, but it tends to be partial and it tends to be weaker um, than small lymphocytes. We do know, however, that classical Hodgkin lymphoma, the plastic cells, are of B cell lineage. Um, and so we can use another B cell marker, a different B cell marker, um, to prove that, and that's PAX5. PAX5, of course, is a transcription factor, so what it shows is a nuclear stain. Is Now you can see some of the large cells are staining positive for PAX5. Now again, that staining is weaker than what we see in the small B cells, um, but it's definitely positive. And this is important because, as we'll talk about in a minute, because these stain positive for CD30, you need to be able to distinguish uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma from something like anaplastic large cell lymphoma, um, which is a T cell neoplasm, and the presence of PAX5 helps you do that. The uh, key marker um, in the diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma is CD30. And even in this low power image, you can see now um, that there are CD30 positive cells. So now you can see that the things that are staining uh, positive for CD30 are these large atypical cells that we saw in the H&E section. And you can see that there's definitely membrane staining um, with CD30, but there's this Golgi apparatus accentuation, um, sort of a perinuclear accentuation of the stain
The other marker that sometimes stains positive in Hodgkin and Reed Sternberg cells is CD15. The challenge with CD15 in a uh, in a Hodgkin lymphoma like this one, where there were so many uh, granulocytes, both neutrophils and eosinophils, is that CD15 stains those cells as well. So you can see even at low power that there are a lot of positive cells, and most of those cells are actually the granulocytes. And this is one of those Hodgkin and Reed Sternberg cells. And what you'll appreciate is there's not much membrane staining here, but there's clearly, again, sort of a Golgi apparatus accentuation that has a granular character with CD15. So that's a CD15 positive um, Hodgkin and Reed Sternberg cell. And CD15 is not positive um, in every case of classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Just a fraction of them um, are positive, and it depends on what uh, antibody you use. Um, in your particular laboratory that changes the frequency at which they um, are positive as well. Lymphoma is CD45 um, and a lot of times CD45 uh, can be difficult to interpret um, because the, most of the leukocytes stay positive for CD45 um, and if you get a little bit closer um, you can see that some of the larger cells um, that you can make out here or make out here for example are negative for CD45, and that's another one of the hallmarks um, of uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, so now I want to contrast that prior case with a case of nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, and this comes from an 11-year-old girl who had a, about a 3.6 centimeter neck mass around the angle of her jaw. And you can see this very different from uh, what we saw in the previous case. Uh, there is effacement of the lymph node, um, and this time it's effaced by these big nodules um, that are much more cellular than what we saw in the prior case. And if you look down here on the edge, you can really appreciate one of the features of uh, nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, or what we call LP Hodgkins. And you can see that it's not an infiltrative uh, lesion, but rather it has what we call a pushing border. And so you can see that it kind of pushes the normal lymphoid tissue to the edge and compresses it against um, the capsule of the lymph node. One of the other features that you can appreciate is, as you look at one of these larger nodules is that the larger nodule is actually composed of smaller nodules that I'm trying to circle here with the arrow. So it has kind of a nodules within nodules um, sort of appearance. Um, that's apparent especially right here, for example, where we have a large nodule that's composed of a lot of smaller nodules. is in contrast to the prior case that isn't really a mixed infiltrate. Instead what you see here is a lot of small lymphocytes but interspersed between those small uh, lymphocytes are larger cells and you can see them really highlighted nicely um, here. That They're larger and uh, less um, irregularly shaped. They're not generally bilobed like what we saw in the uh, in the classical Hodgkin lymphoma case, that sometimes the uh, they have sort of fine irregularities that, um, with the pathologist penchant to compare everything to food, we call popcorn cells. Um, this one uh, that you see here has a nice uh, big nucleolus. Now, one of the key features of these large atypical cells is they have a very different immunophenotype than what you see in classical Hodgkin lymphoma, which is what we'll look at next. This is a CD3 um, immunostain. Um, and as you look at it, you can see um, the nodules highlighted, especially those smaller nodules, not by the CD3 stain, but rather by the absence of the CD3 stain. So in between the nodules, you see lots of CD3 positive T cells, um, and the nodules themselves are relatively uh, CD3 negative. There are, even within those nodules, some T cells, and they occur in sort of an interesting distribution. Um, you can see them sort of surrounding um, rimming or ringing um, the large atypical cells, which allows those a large atypical cells to really stand out. But the atypical cells themselves are negative for CD3. It's just that they're surrounded by small CD3 positive T cells. The CD20 stain, um, these nodules are mostly composed of um, CD20 positive B cells. So, and as you look closely in these nodules, if you look for some of the large atypical cells, which are particularly um, abundant in this field, you can see that those large atypical cells are CD20 positive. Um, again, in contrast um, with the Hodgkin and Reed Sternberg cells of classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Interestingly though, as they occur in these uh, B cell nodules, uh, 
the cells that are immediately surrounding the large atypical cells, which hopefully you can appreciate here, are CD20 negative. So again, it accentuates that rimming effect of the T cells um, that surround um, the large atypical cells, which in this dis disease we call popcorn cells or LNH cells um, or LP cells, depending on your preference. Okay, so we'll next look at PAX5. Within these nodules, that they're, they're made up of small B cells, um, but the large atypical cells are, are staining as well, um, indicating that they're of B cell origin. The main contrast uh, with classical Hodgkin lymphoma is the CD30 stain. You can see that at low power, there's very little CD30 positive staining cells. And as you get to higher power, you can see that there are scattered cells, but they're not the large atypical cells that are staining with CD30 here. They're predominantly um, small to medium-sized immunoblasts or activated B cells um, within the uh, infiltrate. You can see here these large atypical cells um, are negative for CD30, and that's one of the hallmarks um, of, of uh, LP Hodgkin lymphoma. The same is true of CD15, and again, you see very few positive cells here because there aren't the granulocytes that were present in classical Hodgkin lymphoma. And again, looking closely, you can see some of these large atypical cells that are clearly negative um, for CD15. Now remember that CD45 was negative in classical Hodgkin lymphoma, but here you can see even at low power that the larger atypical cells seem to stain positive for CD45. Here's a good example right here. You can see two large atypical cells right next to each other, and they have a thin membrane running between them, which clearly indicates that these are CD45 positive. Two other stains that may be helpful in LP Hodgkin lymphoma, one of them is uh, CD21. CD21 of, stain, of course stains um, follicular dendritic cells and their meshworks that they form um, in follicles. You can see as you scan around here that there are uh, CD21 positive follicular dendritic cell meshworks that correspond to the small nodules that we saw morphologically um, in this disease. Though what you can appreciate as you get closer is that those meshworks are expanded and infiltrated, sort of disrupted. Um, which is typical of these nodules as they expand. And the last thing I'll show you is, a, is another stain that we didn't look at for classical Hodgkin lymphoma, and that's CD57, um, which is a, a marker of particular types of T cells. Um, and one thing that you'll notice if you're able to com compare this to a reactive lymph node, for example, is that there are a lot more CD57 positive cells than you would see in a reactive lymph node. But the pattern um, of infiltration is really important because you can see that there are particular examples of CD57 positive T cells, which are those rimming T cells around the LP cells or LNH cells um, in nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. And that's a feature um, of this disease as well. Summarizing the features of classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So the mixed infiltrate with uh, eosinophils, neutrophils, histiocytes, lymph small lymphocytes and plasma cells. Um, interspersed with large atypical cells that are generally positive for CD30, sometimes positive for CD15, um, sometimes positive for CD20, but partial and weak when it is, um, generally positive, although weakly, for PAX5, um, and negative for CD3 and CD45. So you can see that despite the fact that they share some characteristics, um, the pattern, the type of infiltrate, the morphology of the large atypical cells, and especially the immunophenotype of the large atypical cells, provide a nice contrast that allows you to separate um, classical Hodgkin lymphoma from nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma.